you have been called uh, a revolutionary. What do you see as the meaning of the term revolutionary? Basically, the revolutionary wants to change the nature of society in a way to promote a world where the needs and interests of the people are responded to. A revolutionary realizes, however, that in order to create a world where human beings can live and, and love and be healthy and create, we have to completely revolutionize the entire fabric of society. Hip-hop was built on a foundation of revolution. From the earliest days of the culture, revolution has been the one constant in every avenue that has pushed hip-hop forward. From the visual reclamation of city walls that is graffiti, to the inherent rebellion against classic song creation that is hip-hop sampling, revolution is in the DNA of what makes up the culture. Rapping itself is the ultimate vessel for artistic revolution. As poets of the people, rappers are able to instruct and inspire millions of listeners when they have the mind of a revolutionary. A person with the gift of revolution can move mountains, and an MC with the gift can change the world. Groups like Public Enemy brought hip-hop's rebellious nature to the forefront, and while most hip-hop artists since then shy away from the culture's roots in rebellion, the ones who have embraced it have been able to make a lasting impact on the world through what they're able to create. Immortal Technique is one of hip-hop's most powerful revolutionaries. As a man who mastered political poetry, his words have reached millions of people across the world, and his actions have reached even farther. His friend, mentor, civil rights leader, and fellow musical icon Harry Belafonte once relayed the following words of wisdom to Immortal Technique. God rest his soul. And he once told me, he said that um, every movement needs a thinker and a hammer. And sometimes we can all philosophize about being uh, doing the right thing. But unfortunately, unless we have a hammer to break out of where we are, we'll be sitting there and thinking all day. Now, if the movement just has a hammer, then every problem looks like a nail, right? So then if that becomes the only tool you have, then you deal with all your problems with a hammer and you end up breaking everything around you. When Harry said that you are both of those, you have to be good, what he was saying is you created a very good balance of both at the same level, but most people can't handle them being yeah. at the same level. They have to choose one or the other, and that's fine as long as they're both present. You can be okay. the thinker as long as you know, hey, if it goes down, I'm gonna have, I gotta be the hand. Like, <laughs> if it goes down, I can't run when they start shooting the tear gas. I gotta just put the mask on and drag yes. the kids out. I gotta do my job. You see, every movement needs a thinker and a hammer. And you can only be a successful revolutionary if you are both. The hammer is action, and the thinker is the philosopher. Hip hop is filled with thinkers, but very few are able to put their philosophy to action. Immortal Technique has spent the last three decades becoming one of the most unique and important thinkers in hip hop. You may look at his catalog and wonder why he only has a few projects out, and that's because he is a man of action and has used his hammer to make an impact on the world. Immortal Technique and his family immigrated to Harlem, New York in the early 80s to escape from the Peruvian Civil War. He was arrested multiple times throughout his teenage years and hilariously was the high school bully of Lin-Manuel Miranda, even though the two would become friends later on. Shortly after enrolling at Penn State, he was charged with assault for his involvement in an altercation with some fellow students. He was incarcerated for a year, and while he was in jail, he honed his rap skills, becoming an excellent battler. After he was released on parole, he took political science classes in Baruch College in New York. He began selling mixtapes out of the trunk of his car and making waves in the New York battle rap circuit and soon became one of the most exciting unsigned artists in the city. The late 90s and early 2000s saw a rise in the underground battle rap scene and he used his earnings from those battles to release his first album, Revolutionary Volume 1, completely independently. His revolution is not only with his words on this album, but it is the album itself. He was a revolutionary revolting against the industry and paving the way for independent artists to move forward like he did for the next two decades. This album is one of the greatest displays of rapping that underground hip-hop has ever seen. His style is aggressively lyrical, with every word and syllable stamped on each track like it's carved into his philosophical constitution. 
You see, Immortal Technique is both well-lived and well-read, so he's able to lay down verses that are reeling in the realities of street life and crime, while also dropping knowledge in a way that the listener is able to learn something from his songs. He covers topics of race, religion, government corruption, and real-life stories, with each of these topics being covered in the immortal technique that is rap in its purest form. His incredible vocabulary and copious amounts of creativity balance so uniquely against his aggressive style of delivery. The song Dance with the Devil is probably what he's most known for, and it's pretty legendary. It's one of the most memorable story tracks in hip-hop history, telling a supposed true story almost like a ghetto fable, a cautionary tale about gang culture and living a life far from morality. At over nine minutes long, this song has such tremendous patience, drawing you in before horrifying you with its twists and turns and then leaving you with a lesson about what Dancing with the Devil could get you. The album came out soon after 9-11, and the subject matter on the record was so controversial that he would receive death threats. Even on the cover of the album, he had the hammer and sickle, representing the working class and communism, hovering over dead soldiers and police officers, representing a true revolution. After being picked as one of the best independent artists in the Source magazine's unsigned hype column, he released Revolutionary Volume 2 in 2003. This album was so successful that he had major labels reaching out, trying to sign him. He would stay independent to his core, while also working with labels to re-release his two revolutionary albums, getting his message to more people around the world. Immortal Technique is what many would call a conscious rapper, but he has put his money where his mouth is and always occupied the role as both the thinker and the hammer. He would put that to the test with his third album, The Third World, which he released in 2008 with producer DJ Green Lantern. The album was another great mix of message and a mastery of rap that fans had come to expect from him. But the most remarkable thing about this album is what happened after its release. He used the profits of this album to go over to Afghanistan and build an orphanage and a school to help the youth. And he would be very involved in these kids' growth and development over the years. He's not just speaking the words of a revolutionary, but he has taken action to affect the world himself. Immortal Technique has built a passionate fan base over a very short time that helps support his art so that he could contribute to the world in other ways. He has headlined over 20 world tours while becoming an activist both in idea and action. He is always on the front lines, especially during COVID, starting up his own charity to help those in need. He has created grant programs for high schoolers, visited both schools and prisons to relay his knowledge to the youth, and has helped get children's hospitals built in a number of different countries. The only substantial musical offering that he's released since Third World is his 2011 mixtape called Martyr, which was a compilation of previously unreleased material. This tape has some of the hardest raps that he's ever released, and proved how passionate his fans were, tallying up over 1 million downloads in the first week alone. He has been teasing the release of his next album, The Middle Passage, really since he released Revolutionary Volume 2 in the mid-2000s. It's been delayed numerous times over the years for a variety of reasons, including COVID and some personal losses in his life. He's described this as being his most personal record, and while I don't know if it will actually ever get released, whenever he is ready to drop, I just hope the world's ready to hear the revolution that he's been living for all these years. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to drop your favorite Immortal Technique song down in the comments. Shout out to my patrons who voted on Immortal Technique as this month's video topic. Head over to patreon.com slash defgoldbloom if you want to vote on next month's topic. Along with the ability to vote on a video each month, you also get a curated playlist from me each month, a podcast wrapping up all of my thoughts on all the new music and everything I've been listening to, and much, much more. Thank you guys so much for all the support this year. And as always, I got a lot more headed your way. So stay tuned, stay safe, and stay deaf. Thanks for watching.